Hi, my name is Trevor Steenholt. I'm one of the franchise development directors here at Right at Home. And today I have the pleasure of inter or interviewing Kari James. So Kari, why don't you start out by uh, introducing yourself. Tell us who you are and where you're located. Hi, Trevor. Uh, my name is Kari James and I am located in West Palm Beach, Florida. Nice. And when did you become a franchisee? I made my acquisition in the early early February of 2020, right before the shutdown of pandemic, um, and got fully licensed um, by end of September of 2020. Gotcha. So in a former life, what were you doing prior to becoming a right at home franchisee? What was your professional background? Um, I had, if I look back on the long way, there were several different things, but just prior to coming to right at home, I um, was working with a group of interventional radiologists and neurointerventional radiologists, um, doing some sales and marketing, but also doing things like setting up vascular screening programs, educating the public on things like fibroid embolizations, and also educating referring physicians on the different things that the, the surgeons did. Gotcha. So you had a pretty solid background in medical industry. Yeah, I started, actually, I started my, my career out being a pharmaceutical sales at Pfizer many years ago, um, and then also was involved a little bit with uh, Simon Med Imaging and radiology, and then went with the um, interventional radiologists. So what was, what led you down the path to become a right at home franchisee? Um, actually, um, to be honest with you, my husband had been in high tech. Uh, out in Silicon Valley for many, many years, and he was ready to make a change. So he was looking for himself and he stumbled across uh, during his search right at home. And as he learned about it, he was really impressed and he really actually thought I would be a good fit for being a right at home owner, knowing my personality and my attention to detail and my experience in the medical industry. So he brought it to my attention and kind of from there, it just he introduced me to uh, right at home and I got, I was impressed with what I heard and what I learned and went from there. Yeah. And, and I mean, you're a newer franchisee. So talk to me about like training and some of the systems that you utilize here at right at home. Um, the training, uh, the training was good. Um, I went for, for the first part of training at the headquarters, um, which kind of focused on the sales aspect of, you know, uh, you know, starting to, to try to, you know, market your business. Um, then the pandemic hit. So the second part of training was virtual, um, which was good. But of course, as you know, nothing's as good in virtual as it is in person. Um, and there's a little bit of, for me, it was a little bit more difficult because of the time when I started my business again with the pandemic. I, when they first started, I was supposed to have a certain, um, team that was supposed to stay with me for like new owners for the first year or something. And because of everything going on, they took that away. And then they put me with regular coaches that all the other right at home owners were kind of using. Um, and they're great. They're great coaches. But the problem was they were so overwhelmed with helping the other owners with everything during the pandemic that they really weren't available during, you know, helping in someone new with the probably what they seem as, you know, <laughs> tedious questions um, at the time. So that was a little, that was really challenging. I, you know, starting a business during that time frame was really tough. And it, it's nothing that right at home didn't do wrong. You know, it wasn't something they did wrong. It's just that they were also overwhelmed and scrambling to help the, you know, bigger, um, older owners. So um, I really, I really benefited from getting to know other owners that were kind of, opening the businesses at the same time as I did. And we really kind of helped each other along um, getting up and running and answering each other's questions. And, you know, if none of us had the answers, then we would kind of divide and conquer and someone would research it and then share it with the others. And, and that was a tremendous help. Well, I thought I heard through the grapevine that you recently had a coach come out to your, to your site. Is that correct? Yes, uh, Daniel was here two days ago. Um, right. and he's, he's fantastic. He's, um, he covers a lot. He, uh, and I have to tell you the one thing I really appreciate is if I call or text Daniel, he is back to me instantly, like just, he's amazing. So, 
Um, I really appreciate that. And it was, it was nice to kind of see him again in person. So when you, for the people that are listening to this, that might want some insights as to what it, a working dynamic is between a franchisee and a coach, like what are some of the things that you and Daniel are sorting through during those coaching visits? Um, well, this most recent coaching visit um, was just kind of talking about some of the changes that are currently going on at right at home. Um, and we also talked about, um, you know, kind of where I am compared to where I started and, you know, still focusing on the growth um, as well as other opportunities down the road, whether we learn more about the skilled licensing or other territories that might be available, that type of stuff. Um, so we did a little bit of strategy talk. Um, I don't, I don't use them too much anymore on a day-to-day uh, basis. Um, you know, maybe small things, quick questions, but um, I think probably more on day-to-day, like I, I, I know I have to tackle a, a billing issue um, that, you know, I go into, I call support and I either usually speak to Jessica or huh. I think it's John or somebody. Okay. So, I mean, this is a, uh... This is very much a fluid question here, but walk me through a typical day because I'm it's 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 gonna I I know it's gonna gonna greatly vary. So you know, paint us a channel your inner Bob Ross here and paint us a, a picture of maybe what a typical day or what several typical days might look like for you. Um, okay. Uh, well, I have to say it's never too typical, but uh, it depends on the day of the week. So Mondays are usually our busiest days. Um, all the things that happened over the weekend seem to need to be addressed, um, whether it's caregivers calling in about work or clients wanting changes to their schedule or uh, whatever. And billing is done on Monday. So um, just min- Mondays are crazy. So I come in and I'm, you know, I tackle all the phone calls, the emails, um, and then hopefully start the, the process of billing. Um, and with billing, it's, you know, you do it in clear care, but you still have you know, once you have long-term care insurance companies and everything else, you have to, you know, submit everything along with uh, care logs, whether they're faxed or emailed. And so it's not very hard. It's just kind of time consuming. And it's as a newer owner, it's still something that is on my plate that I'm looking to hopefully pass off in the near future. Cause not that it's hard. It's just, again, it's just time consuming and I preferred the sales and marketing side of it. So the more time that I'm caught up doing that, it's less time that I'm having the opportunity to grow my business. Um, I would say other things that happen throughout the day. Um, I have an, I have an HR manager, so she does all our onboarding and keeps track of all the uh, employee records. Um, once in a while, I still try to help out with scheduling, especially if it's an urgent issue or if it's something where I know the client pretty well and, under, and understand their needs a little better. Um, I'm out doing assessments. Um, I'm following up with clients. I'm prospecting. I'm always working and looking to find new business, whether it's um, talking to referral, uh, referral basis or social media or, you know, whatever, you know, anytime I can, I get some, you know, leads that I need to follow up on. I sit and take an hour of my day and, you know, follow up with them. So um, it's just a combination of, of everything. Um, and it never gets done. I mean, I, I, I have been at the office until eight or nine at night. Um, but then I also realized that I am running a marathon and not a sprint. So um, I'm trying to, after these past couple of years, which were really challenging, I'm trying to find a little more balance and get the time home to exercise and spend, you know, have that downtime for myself. So what is your most favorite part of being in the business? I get to tell really interesting stories to my family. Yeah. <laughs> I go, you won't believe this. <laughs> um, you, you meet a lot of people that you would never normally meet. Um, and definitely there are, there are people that disappoint you in life. Um, but what's more important is there's a lot of people that inspire you. Um, and that's really incredible. And whether Um, they appreciate, you know, all that you and your caregivers do, or you see the dedication of the family, um, or like a spouse taking care of the other spouse. Um, it's, it's really incredible. You know, we, we watch the TVs and we look at the social media and most people portray a very, you know, glamorous, perfect life, right? Everyone's got what trying to produce this image. 
Um, and the reality is I get to look in on a lot of homes and um, family dynamics and, you know, just really seeing that the true love and support um, that people have for one another is really amazing. Well, we want to, in the spirit of keeping fair balance here, what is something that you don't like about the business? When there's a ca caregiver who does a no call, no show, <laughs> uh, especially really, you know, really big client. I mean, that's just, it's just, an, uh, it's just stressful. It shows um, like a, you know, a smudge on your reputation. Um, it happens everywhere, unfortunately. It's in every company, it's throughout the industry, um, but it's, it's stressful. So, um, or, you know, even if they do call and they just don't give you enough notice and you're really scrambling to fill, you know, clients that really need services. It's just, it's like what we call them the fires, just putting the fires out. So um, when you have a day without fires or have only one or two, then that's a good day. It's the days where you feel like you put out all the fires and the phone rings and it's like another fire. So. Sure. Sure. So let's talk about caregivers a little bit. Like what are some of the things that you do in your office to create a good culture? Um, we really try to keep the communication channels open uh, with them. And, you know, I know it's, as the owner, as you're growing the business, you kind of tend to move a little bit away from, from that uh, with regards to scheduling or when they're onboarding. And I am trying to avoid getting caught up in the day to day, but I do make a point of every time um, I'm in the office and I see new caregivers being onboarded, at least, you know, going back and introducing myself and talking to them and, you know, putting a face with a name and thanking them for coming in and hoping, you know, telling them, I, I hope things work out with the right at home. And, uh, we, you know, we look forward to a good, long working relationship. Um, I think it's important to understand that, you know, they're humans and they have they have a life too. They have family members, they have needs. So as frustrating as to try to reschedule things. Um, and oftentimes we, you know, we get clients that don't like change. So they get a little bit frustrated if we have to fill someone in and, you know, I'm like, you know, how to remind the clients. I'm like, look, they're, they work hard to help you, but they do have a family and they do have, they get sick and they have to go to the doctor's office. And, you know, it's just making sure that, and everyone keeps perspective of, of what we're all trying to accomplish here. Awesome. 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 So uh, these calls, they go, they go pretty quick. We like to keep them to about 15 minutes and we're right okay. about there. So I'll do, uh, I'll do our, our final question here. So for somebody that's watching this video and entertaining, maybe taking this next step and, and becoming a right at home franchisee, what would be the best piece of advice that you could give a prospective franchisee who's looking at right at home? Um, I would say really quickly, I, from what I understand, understand what's required within the state, understand the licensing, how much is involved with getting your business up and running. And then if you're in a certain state, whether it's Florida or New York or something, make sure that you're prepared mentally with having the right capital to have a complete business up and running before you even get your license and get clients. Um, and I would say that the other thing is, um, it, the first, especially the first two years, probably three years, it, it's just, it's going to, it takes everything. Um, you're going to be the caregiver. You're going to wear every hat in the business. You're going to have to put in the hours. It's, you know, uh, unless you have a lot of money to throw out the business in the beginning, you have to do everything. Um, and, you know, you just, your friends, your family, they don't see much of you and they have to understand that. Um, if you're kind of expecting to just jump in and still maintain the, the life and all the daily activities you do. <laughs> um, it's going to be a little bit more challenging, but you know, I'm, I'm very competitive. I was very uh, eager to, to get the business up and move growing fast. And so I, I put in the time and, you know, I'm hoping that I can now see the light at the end of the tunnel. So um, you just have to make, just be really dedicated. It's not easy, but I don't think any new businesses. So. Yeah, I feel like if if anybody that's watching this is entertaining right at home or any other business out there, if you go into it thinking it's going to be easy, you you've you're already behind the eight ball. You're setting yourself up for some big time disappointment. Yeah, I mean, and I would say have have a support. Um, I mean, obviously, family is good, but um, I have a couple other franchise owners who, again, who are where about where I am. And I have to tell you that when you're having those bad days and no one else can understand, 
um, they have been a huge support. They can, they're the ones you can call and, you know, you joke, and say, oh, there's a home care business for sale in Florida. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, you, you really need, you need someone, you need a couple people that can kind of help listen to you, um, remind you about the big picture and, um, and just, just kind of almost laugh with you at, at the headaches that come along with it. Well, Kari, thank you so much for spending some time to talk about your experience here at Right at Home and, um, and, and share that with the people that are, that are watching this. We greatly appreciate that. Thank you.